Welcome everyone to QB Power Hour. Today is March 22nd, 2018. And today's topic is supporting QuickBooks Desktop remotely with QBox. We're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about QB Power Hour, talk about the sponsors, the host. We'll talk about the CPE and ACE process. And then we'll spend 50 minutes or a little bit more than 50 minutes talking about the main topic today, which is you know, learning why some end users prefer to stay in QuickBooks Desktop instead of moving to QuickBooks Online, which is the obvious choice for working remotely or collaborating. Uh, we'll talk about comparing some of the remote access solutions that I have used, and I have polled some of my colleagues as well in, in what they use, and uh, understanding how QBox um, can support remote desktop clients. So we'll talk about the QBox uh, app uh, towards the end. About QB Power Hour, we are a webinar series, usually twice a month, Thursdays, at 12 p.m. every other Thursday. The next episode will be April 5th and then April 19th. We don't have topics, still working on that. We cover about 50% QuickBooks desktop, 50% QuickBooks online. We switch back and forth. Sometimes we have special guests, third-party apps, practice management topics, and anything related to the accounting industry. Michelle Long is now with us today. I believe she's traveling and doing some training. She's the author of five books, co-host of this series, and also co-host of The Accounting Vcon, which I'll talk to you guys in a little bit about. And she has over 160,000 members in her LinkedIn group called Successful QuickBooks Consultants. Check that out. About myself, my name is Hector Garcia. I'm a CPA, live and work in the Miami area, teach QuickBooks in my own classroom. My email is on the screen and my Twitter handle if you need to reach uh, me directly. We would like to thank our webinar series sponsor, T-Sheets, the number one rated app in apps.com. Create, manage, and approve timesheets from any device. T-Sheets.com forward slash pros. You can go there to get your own account for your accounting firm. We also like to thank Aero Workflow for sponsoring the webinar series. It is the only workflow manager created by a QuickBooks Pro advisor by a few QuickBooks Pro Advisors, four QuickBooks Pro Advisors. It's fully integrated with QuickBooks Online, and you can manage your workflow, your tasks, all that stuff, especially during uh, overwhelming tax season. And also another webinar sponsor, HopDoc, which is the most popular document aggreg aggregator for QuickBooks Power users. Po very powerful, very popular document manager, automatically download bank statements, uh, receipts and bills from uh, vendors. Go to hopdoc.com forward slash QB Power Hour to get a free account for your accounting practice. And the sponsor for this episode is QBox. It's the only file sharing tool specifically designed for folks working with QuickBooks Desktop and sharing a QuickBooks Desktop file. QBoxPlus.com will get you there. We're going to go into details about this app uh, towards the second half of the webinar. This webinar, it's eligible for CPE, not ACE for this particular episode, but just for CPE. You need to be uh, logged in for 50 minutes or more on the live webinar. You have to answer at least three polling questions out of the four. Sometimes we ask five, but you have to answer at least three and you will get an email with a certificate. And again, this one particular is not approved for ACE. Okay, so let's Go right into the content here. So let's talk about why some, actually, let me add some subcontext to this context. I have been accused by, a, <laughs> one person sent me a real nice, nasty email not too long ago saying that I spend way too much time comparing QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online, that there's something wrong with that approach, that, that I'm you know deterring some people from using QuickBooks Online where I shouldn't, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, I really don't care. I like to compare the two because it is my livelihood. I have worked with QuickBooks Desktop for close to 20 years at this point, and I'm very used to it, and I know a lot of my clients are used to it. So when there's so much marketing pushing people um, to, to get into QuickBooks Online, I mean, all of QuickBooks marketing feels like like that's what they push clients to and even if you call into it a customer calls into it to try to you know buy quickbooks they almost ignore the existence of desktop and i get it i am a shareholder of intuit stock and if you actually see the history uh on the past five years you know since 
QuickBooks Online got redesigned the first, uh, five years ago, 2013, with the Harmony design. You know, there's been a huge push for QuickBooks Online, and it shows. Investors like it. Customers like it. It's, it's definitely the future. But these comparisons are, are very important, especially for making that choice to upgrade people or to keep them in desktop. So, let, you know, so I polled some of my clients and some of my colleagues, and these are some of the common answers we have. So there's still a lot of folks that are, are worried about the monthly fees. And as long as Intuit gives people a choice to buy a fixed software Pro Premier Accountant, you can still buy fixed license costs. They're almost always going to compare that. You know, it's difficult to, um, you know, to 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 compare apples to apples because QuickBooks Online is cloud based, and that has a huge cost element, and is it would be expensive for anyone to host their own QuickBooks desktop. And we'll discuss all that stuff in detail. But that comparison of monthly fees versus fixed fees, I think, still comes afloat, and I think they're very they're very relevant nowadays. Now. People that like to stay in desktop, normally they have no need for remote users. So I think wanting a remote user, wanting somebody to work remotely or to collaborate remotely, it happens to be one of the most important things that drives people into thinking about QuickBooks Online. Um, you know, they, they don't have any need to work in a mobile app. That's another place. A lot of newer entrepreneurs that are very phone, smartphone oriented, they, they can expect all software to be app based. And QuickBooks Desktop, unfortunately, doesn't have an app. QuickBooks Online does. And that is a selling point. And when you see the QuickBooks commercials on TV or YouTube or whatever, you also see um, you know, you, you see people doing all sorts of things on the phone and as if accounting can be completely done on the phone. And I'm pretty sure at some point it will, but it's, it's just, it's just not realistic to do everything possible on the phone, but end users still have that, that in mind that they want to do more and more things on the mobile app. So that also encourages or, or gets people thinking about going to QuickBooks online. So the folks that don't need that or don't see a value on that tend not to care too much about that and stay in desktop. Another issue that QuickBooks Online has, another area with, where there's a lot of complaints, especially from the accounting community, is that there are no backups or restore points. So if somebody screws up along the way or somebody integrates an app and you don't like you know, what it did or whatever, you, there's really no way to go back uh, to a particular date um, or have a, a cut period of, of data for an audit. You really have those restrictions in QuickBooks Online, and QuickBooks Desktop just does that better. Um, the people that are okay with having remote users using remote desktop solutions or file sharing solutions, which will be the bulk of what we'll discuss today. And another big one, probably the biggest one, is the lacking of features. A job costing, enhanced payroll, inventory, custom reports user permissions are still a really important thing for the management side of accounting, not just the accounting side, but the management and administrative side of the accounting. And QuickBooks Desktop just does that better. Um, and that link that you see on the screen that's on the handouts, if you click on that, it'll take you to my comparison chart. That's my own comparison chart. I'll pull it up there real quick um, because that, that happens to be, in my opinion, one of the most valuable resources that I have um, invested my time in creating, both for myself and uh, the community, because if you get a comparison chart from Intuit, you're gonna get this like six lines of things, of things that are completely not relevant. Um, so this is 140 something features that I basically wrote down and I'm comparing every one of these features in Essentials Plus, Enterprise and Pro Premier. So I think this is an incredibly valuable tool to have. Um, you know, to just because I, I don't think, unfortunately, that the resources for comparing the two online and desktop that are out there from Intuit are complete enough. So sometimes you may have to dip, uh, dig a little bit deeper in order to determine whether or not you know you're doing a fair comparison of uh, of the two. Okay, so that's that that spreadsheet, so it's good to know. And also, um, there's a lot of folks that just don't want to change. Right? They don't want to change. It works. They don't want to learn something new. Some people are afraid of this whole cloud concept, you know, obviously, and you have to meet clients where they are. And, um, you know, external accountant or bookkeeper are okay with working remotely or working with backups. So these are, I believe, the eight reasons why, why, why people that 
maybe good fit to go to QuickBooks Online, still think about not moving to QuickBooks Online and staying on desktop. Now, I did a poll, um, and I'm showing it on the screen here, and I'm also going to run a poll real quick. So now we're about 30 minutes in. So I'm going to run a poll real quick about what is your preference uh, of QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop. And you don't have to pick one. Um, the fifth option there says I'm indifferent. I can use both platforms. So it's okay to answer something like that. Totally okay. So it'll be nice to know, um, you know, what, how, how you feel about QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online, just what you prefer. You don't have to state the specifics or comment on the specifics, but you prefer online at this point, uh, still prefer desktop, or are you agnostic? And it's okay for you to use both. So we'd love to hear that from you guys. And uh, we have about 86% of the votes in. Okay, and let me see some of the comments for now. Is this your first poll? No, this is a second poll. So we'll have this poll and two more that will come in. Uh, somebody says, can the comparison sheet be available in Excel? Yes, if you click on the link, you can download the Excel file, you can edit it on your own. Uh, some people says, I like the features in desktop and the integration and workflow uh, improvements of QuickBooks Online. Okay, that's a good one. Um, so a few folks prefer QuickBooks Online. Some people say QuickBooks Online could be an issue if there's no internet. That's obviously very important um, to a lot of folks. Okay, so we're about 95% of the votes in. I'm going to leave it up for another 10 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to leave the polling question up for another 10 seconds. Uh, somebody asked for me to copy and paste the link. It's on the chat, so I copy and pasted the link to that comparison sheet cheat on the chat let me go ahead and close the polling question we have a 95 percent of the votes two minutes in and i'll show those results real quick so we have 39 percent of the people and we're we polled 500 people pretty much 39 percent prefer quickbooks desktop over quickbooks online we have let's see what else we have 22 percent prefer QuickBooks Online over QuickBooks Desktop, but can still use desktop. And then there's still a few that only use one or the other, and only 14% are platform agnostic. I find that one pretty interesting, okay? I happen to be one of the, the last option there. I'm completely indifferent by it. Like I've, I, I, I've, I encourage people to use QuickBooks Online when it's the right fit, and I encourage people to use QuickBooks Desktop. Now, I had a, I did an informal poll in our Facebook group for QB Power Hour, and we had the majority of people say that the clients uh, are the ones that prefer to stay in desktop because of cost effectiveness. So, and, and most QB Power Hour people are accounting professionals, pro advisors. So the perception of of the, I would say, the sample of pro advisors is that clients prefer to stay in desktop because of cost. And then the second one here is that the accounting professional, the perception is accounting professionals feel that QuickBooks Desktop can still do more, I would say feature-wise, than QuickBooks Online. Okay, so let's move on to the, the, the concepts that we wanted to, to cover today, which is, you know, what are the different ways to support QuickBooks Desktop uh, clients? So one of the one of the most common ways that I personally use is uh, TeamViewer. What, what's really nice about TeamViewer is that you pay one license and you have unlimited clients, whereas uh, LogMeIn, ShareConnect, GoToMyPC, all of those you pay per client or per computer that you log into. Now, TeamViewer is much more expensive than all the other solutions but again, I support three, four hundred people in QuickBooks at any in any year, uh, you know, between you know, remote bookkeeping and support and training and all that stuff. So for me, TeamViewer, it's it's a it's a better choice. So there's also um, and again, unattended remote access means you can log in at any point in time, right? You don't have to call the client, you don't have to interrupt them. Then there's on-demand access. Which you know, for that you can also use GoToMeeting, you can use Zoom, you can use Skype. Those are usually less expensive, but that requires somebody at the other end to accept the connection, to accept 
uh, the the remote support and that sort of thing. Whereas on attended access, you know, allows you to connect at any point in time. Then option three, we have unattended hosted um, system using remote uh, desktop, which could be a server that that the, the QuickBooks user sets up on their own and and it usually requires an IT professional and all that stuff. Or you can use um, a hosted solution like Right Networks, that's about $50 a month per user. Or you can get a virtual server from Amazon Web Services or, or Microsoft uh, Azure. So there's a couple of options uh, there. And the fourth one is QuickBooks tools. Like QuickBooks actually has built-in tools for for accountants supporting their clients. One of them is accountants copy, and I'll I'm gonna go down the path of explaining why I think it's a bad choice. I would love to know who actually uses it and is successful. And there's also uh, the choice that a lot of accountants do, which is they'll make adjustments via journal entries, and then they'll just send the client the journal entries that need to be done. So let's dive deep into um, uh, into all those things. But there's one more thing I wanted to cover, which is I've I've polled, informally polled a couple of my accounting uh, professional um, colleagues, and some people still don't know that there's this, this sort of quasi-hidden tool called Accountant's Toolbox, which allows you to enable all the accounting tools like reclassify, client data review, all that stuff in QuickBooks Pro Premier, 2015, 2018, as long as you have a, um, a active pro advisor subscription and, um, and you can access um, and, and, uh, and you can log in to your pro advisor uh, account using the username and password, it will literally turn on, temporarily turn on all the accountant tools um, in a pro premier file, which is essential for people uh, doing sort of remote access type of work. Uh, so team viewer, log me in, that sort of thing. And, you know, and uh, there's a link there for um, the intuitive accountant article that kind of talks about this feature. So let's dive deep into each of these. Um, let, me, let me look at the questions real quick before we do that. And uh, we have a, <clears throat> still have a lot of comments of people just uh, agreeing or disagreeing with the whole uh, notion of QuickBooks desktop and QuickBooks online. Um, let me see. Uh, somebody commenting that there's still a strong affinity towards QuickBooks desktop and then maybe this group is a little old school. That's possible. <laughs> maybe we are old school. Um, there's other options like My Quick Cloud and Remote PC. I haven't, I haven't covered any of those two, so I just wanted to, somebody's mentioning that. Let's see. Uh, I want to talk about the elephant in the room. I use QuickBooks desktop and was forced to learn QuickBooks online what is the portal option? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Pamela. We'll see if that covers it. Um, let me see. Does TeamViewer knock the client uh, out of QuickBooks when you log in? No, TeamViewer actually takes over control over the computer. Somebody says, you didn't mention Splashtop is $60 a year and um, and it covers a lot of computers. Okay, so Splashtop is another option. I have never used that before. Uh, let's see. Um, somebody says, what about VPN? I, I've never used VPN, so I guess that's an option. And Soho Assist. Okay. I've also never used Soho Assist. Okay. So thanks for those comments. So let's start by doing a little bit of a deep dive here. And let's start with what I call the fully managed hosting service, Right Networks. This is one of the biggest, most popular options, especially with QuickBooks enterprise clients. And Right Networks costs about $50 a month per user. Um, I, I don't know, I mean, it, it could go up and down by $5. I don't know if that number has changed. It's it's nice because it's you have your data in a centralized location. They do automatic backups pretty much and they do 30 days of versioning. So you can go back to any day in time and, and recover the file from any 30 days ago. All the computing power is removed from the workstation. So none of the, com the computers don't really have to be anything fancy or fast or anything like that. Um, you can use a Mac, which is great, you know, with a hosting solution, you can use, use a Mac and you don't need to invest in your own internal server. And there's no quote unquote IT drama, right? Because you don't have to manage or control your own 
your own uh, your IT structure and permissions and stuff like that. But there are some drawbacks. Uh, one of the biggest drawbacks to me is that you don't have admin access and you don't have a whole lot of control over which third-party apps you can integrate. You actually have to get right networks to agree to install whatever third-party app you want to use. If you want to use uh, Word or, or Excel, it's a little bit cumbersome, you know, with, especially with copy and paste when you're doing remote access. So there, those are like pretty much the pros and cons. Now, some companies, some of my clients uh, use a self-managed hosting solution where they still, it is an alternative to right networks, where they still don't have a server on their side um, and and they use Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure of, of Google Cloud to set up their own virtual servers, but that requires IT knowledge because you're going to be doing be doing all the manage management yourself. And usually the cost is based on, not based on users, is based on bandwidth. So the cost could really be a, a complete unknown until you actually try it and usage because it's really difficult to know exactly how much bandwidth a remote solution has. Then there's also the notion of self-hosting which means uh, the QuickBooks desktop client will have their own server, uh, their own server. They'll, they'll make big expenditure up front, the high investment up front, get the IT people involved. Uh, it's usually a much longer setup. Like I've never really had a client get up and running in less than two or three days with something like this, whereas right networks just takes hours, right? So that's kind of like the contrast. Um, but what's nice is you got full control and you have all the, it, it's the same experience as using uh, right networks or something like that. But there's one more added uh, plus to having your own internal server, which is if the internet goes down, at least the local people can still work. So I find that to be um, a really good uh, option as well. And, and, and actually this option is extremely common in my client base. I would say most of my clients are either self-hosting or right networks or a fully managed solution like right networks. I just use right networks because um, that's the only one I recommend. Not that there isn't a better one, it's just that's the only one that I'm personally used to. And then there is uh, the proverbial remote desktop apps, right? The famous team viewers, splash top, go to my PC, zoom, log me in, all that stuff. Those normally have a fee uh, on their own for the app. And typically you pay per node or per client with the exception of TeamViewer, TeamViewer is uh, per user and you can have unlimited clients. Now, there's some pros and cons. Pro is you're working on the client's actual computer. So you don't have to have QuickBooks on your own computer. You can work from any computer as long as you got TeamViewer. You can support clients really easily. The other big pro is that it's, I mean, even, even with my non-techie clients, it's a pretty simple process to walk them through the installation of TeamViewer and adding the password and, and giving you the password and that sort of thing. And it's the best option for providing training or live one-on-one -on -one support, right? Because you want to be able, you want to, be able to uh, show the client what you're doing. You want the client to be seeing what you're doing while you're doing it because that's the essence of, of training. And then you would need something like this for that. You, you can do that with uh, remote desktop or right networks. Uh, because that would be uninterrupted access. This is interrupted access, right? Because you're logging into somebody's workstation. And th that could have some issues, right? Like I, I had a client that had a virus in their computer. Everything got wiped out a day after I worked on it. And they blamed me, of course. They blame me <laughs> for whatever happened to them. So, I mean, that's another issue with working physically on the client's computers. Um, another con is you're working on the client's version of QuickBooks. So, if, um, if their computer is a little bit slow or, or if they have an older version or maybe they don't have the accountant edition and you can't enable the accountant tools, whatever, you may not have all the tools uh, that you need. So, you know, so that, that's kind of like comparing the, the, those four big options in a nutshell. Now, let's talk about what Intuit has given us, what, what, what QuickBooks' solution has been all along, even before, um, even... I would say even before the whole remote desktop revolution and remote access revolution, the accountant's copy existed. Now, this is a built-in tool where the clients can, can lock the file, split it in two, send the accountant, let's call it half the file. The accountant will work locally on their computer without regard of internet 
speed without interrupting the client, make all the changes, and then send the changes back to the client. So that that's actually conceptually awesome. It's amazing. And for some folks, it works. Like I would love to know who's a fan of accountants copy. Like if you if you are a fan, just message me on that. But these are the issues that I've had. Sometimes the accountant's copy gets corrupted or changes don't import. Sometimes the restrictions that happen in the desktop file because of the accountant's copy are very annoying and clients get so frustrated that they end up releasing the accountant's copy and then the accountants end up losing their work. And that's obviously not fun at all. Um, And the accountant needs to have accountant edition of the same year or one year higher in order to work with this function. So that's accountant's copy. Now, similar to accountant's copy, not really similar, but kind of, kind of similar. You can the client can create a backup or a portable, and they send it to the accountant. You know, the accountant works locally again without regard of internet acts uh, uh, speed. But the good thing is that the user on the other side is not interrupted. There's no restrictions. But the problem is if the user on the other side makes changes to, let's say, 2017, uh, while you're working on 2017, when you send the journal entries back, you're not going to get the same end result. So that's a huge problem, I think, for the most part. Um, The other thing is that the only thing you'll be sending is journal entries. So you can't really fix problems that just accumulate errors in inventory or accounts receivable and all that stuff. So you'll be giving the client a good PL and balance sheet, but just a garbage file in everywhere else. And this actually happens quite a bit. I mean, I've, I think almost every account, every old school accountant I know, this is how they work. And some sometimes they'll send a journal entry written by hand by the cost to the customer. Sometimes they'll send them a digital file. I mean, every accountant will do this in a different way. Okay, so before we jump into QBox, which is the sort of the main attraction, let me ask you a question about what is your preferred way to supporting your um, QuickBooks desktop client. So I'm running the polling question now. This is the third polling question. We have four polling questions uh, that we're going to ask. We have a fifth one just in case we go a little bit long. We'll see. So there is a polling question, third polling question. What is your preferred way of working with QuickBooks desktop clients? Okay, while that happens, somebody says, I love accountants copy, no issues, always works, but if there's payroll or inventory, doesn't work as well. A few people saying they're not fans of accountants copy. Okay, yeah, the whole, the payroll element, yeah, the payroll element is a really big issue with accountants copy. It's a lot of people are commenting on that. Let me see. Um... Client gets confused with uh, with restrictions. Yep, that makes sense as well. Let's see. Um, uh, let me see. Choo, 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 choo. Some people say uh, go to assist is another option. Good. Some, someone saying here, I love right networks. Me too. Um, a few people are saying that they are already using QBox, so that's pretty cool. Um, let me see. I prefer live backups uh, by shutting down the client and working on the file and giving the client back the file. That's that's true. But the problem with shutting down the client is some clients just need QuickBooks to do invoicing and get paid and all that stuff. So sometimes we can't afford to shut down the client or only work on the weekends and only work at night. That's a good point. Let me see. Um, see. Okay. All right. So I think... there really, there really isn't a question, just kind of comments, people agreeing or disagreeing with this whole thing. Okay, so let's close the polling question, and I will share the results. I'm sure you're curious to see what most people use. So 38% of people use a remote desktop app like TeamViewer, log me in, go to my PC, that sort of thing. 21% use accountant's copy or work on a copy of the file and then send the journal entries. See, that's very common. My surprise in this group is that common. 16% don't work with QuickBooks Desktop at all or work 
physically on site if they need to. 15% work with right networks, remote desktop, that sort of thing. And 10% are using a file locking sharing mechanism like QBox. Great. So let me get Chris on the phone. Chris is the CEO of QBox or general manager or or lead programmer. I don't know. He, he works Jack for QBox. Ross, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Chris, you know, feel free to interrupt me. I'm going to do the intro and I'm going to pass it over to you. So the best way to describe QBox, it would be like Dropbox, but for QuickBooks files only without the conflicted copies. And I got this graphic from, from my friend Sarah Laidlaw, who uses this to kind of explain to the clients how they how they work. And, and, and she describes QBox as a traffic cop. Okay, we have two computers and we have a cloud copy of the version. And depending on who's working, the traffic cop stops the other person from accessing QuickBooks while the other person is doing stuff. When one person's done, the traffic cop locks the file stops the accountants and sends it back to the customer so the customer can use it. I, I think it's a good explanation. We're going to show a, a live demonstration, Chris and I, of how that works. And I think once you look at the live demonstration, it will make all the sense in the world. Now, quick bullet points here. QBox is $12 a month per folder. Now, a folder can have multiple QuickBooks files, but you never want to have multiple clients in one folder because, you know, the, the folder is what syncs. So essentially it's $12 a month per client, although a client can have multiple company files. The sync uh, can give you unlimited desktop files and, and other documents like PDF, uh, JPEG, Word, Excel, that sort of thing, up to 10 gigabytes of storage. You can, you will, everybody will work locally in QuickBooks. That means that the file will copy completely into your side. So internet speed doesn't really matter while you're working or functioning. So you're working locally. And then once you finish, the file gets sent over. So whoever's next, it's not only, only for two people working, you can have multiple people, five, six people, all remote working remotely. And whoever has the file, everybody's pretty much locked out. But the good thing about that is you don't get those lags based on internet speed of working remotely, okay? And one of the great things about it is you have a client that uses Pro or Premiere and you have Accountant Edition in your computer, you will have all the tools, all the amazing tools that the Accountant Edition of QuickBooks has. Now, if your client has Enterprise, you would have to have Enterprise on your side as well. So that's actually also really important. Pro, Premiere, and Accountant, they're all uh, compatible with each other, but Enterprise is only compatible with Enterprise. And there's also this notion of always on backup. So because you're always copying the file to the cloud, to QBox, which is the intermediary between the two or more users, you always have a backup. So there's no need to do actual backups, although it's always recommended to do backups anyway, but there's like technically no need for it. And there's 20 versions backed up on the cloud. So you can go back 20, you know, 20 versions ago of that file before it was changed. Now, 20 versions doesn't mean 20 days, and it doesn't mean 20 backups. It means 20 times that somebody uh, locked the file and released the file uh, and made changes. Each one, each of it would be a, a revision. Chris, did I miss anything important? Uh, I'm, actually, I'm just sitting here enjoying it. You did an awesome job. You hit everything just right. So, All right, good. Great explanation. Good, thank you. So now let's talk about the caveats. So I'm, I'm giving you the good. Now let me tell you the bad. And Chris, I'm sorry. I got to tell you <laughs> like it is. Okay, when, when you lock the file, um, well, so when you lock the file, no one else can access the QuickBooks file. Now they could, they could access a view only, but the problem is that almost no QuickBooks user is ever satisfied with the notion that they're view only. They always want to touch something. So, so that's going to, so it's going to be like a traffic cup, right? You're not going to have a multi, a true multi-user experience with a remote user with QBox. If you want a true multi-user experience, then you have to go with remote uh, desktop, right networks, something like that. So that's also really important. The other piece is if somebody has QuickBooks open and they forget to close it, you know, that file's locked. I, I don't know what, I'll, I'll let Chris talk about if there's any solutions around that. But if somebody goes to lunch and leaves the QuickBooks file open, 
you know, Qbox doesn't know if that person's looking at reports for an hour or having lunch. So the file is still locked. Okay. You have to have a license of QuickBooks installed in every computer that's, uh, you know, that, that's working with Qbox. Whereas if you were working remotely, you would only need that one license that's on, on that computer. And they all have to be on the same year version. And they also have to be, have to be on the same update. Okay. So that's another really important uh, piece. And users cannot see what the other person's doing. Now you could, you could see on the audit trail who did what, uh, but this is definitely not a solution for live training or live support. This is a solution for folks that, that, uh, that agree to work on the QuickBooks file in different times. Now I did an informal poll in July of 2017 and then an informal poll in March 14, so a couple of weeks ago, uh, a week ago, um, in the and we have over 50 answers here. So we had six, uh, nine months ago, the majority of people were using TeamViewer, and then the second one was QBox, and then today or recently, mo- most of the QB Power Hour crowd, the majority, the pr- plurality anyway is using QBox. So that's actually pretty awesome. So this is a testament of how good the app is. I wouldn't be here talking great about it if the community didn't agree with me. Okay, so let's, um, uh, Chris, let's go ahead and show a demo of that. So let me show you, I'm gonna go ahead and show you on my screen. Okay, so I have Q, I have QBox installed in my computer. And then once, uh, and I'm gonna, let's say that I'm the customer, I'm the client, I'm not the accountant. You know, in, in the QBox world, it doesn't matter who the customer and who the accountant is, the experience is identical. I mean, the only difference is the accountant is managing multiple customers and the accountant is probably paying for the QBox account, but the experience is identical. So this window here is crucial. This is called the QBox Explorer. And what you see here is called the shared folder. So this folder here called um, Hector's Happy Hamburgers is our share folder and there are subfolders under it. Inside of this share folder, you see the QuickBooks file called Hector's Hamburgers. And then here, this is actually a really important piece of this whole thing, you see sync. Now sync, that little checkbox means that the file is currently on the cloud, QBox has it, and no one really is actively opening the file and no one has locked the file. For me to access this file, all I have to do, whether I'm the accountant or the end user, is double click on the file. It will launch QuickBooks automatically, automatically. And we'll wait for the magic question here. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna put the password in. So I'm gonna go to put the passwords, four, five, six, pound and hit okay. Okay, and I I currently, I just launched the file and it gives me the magic question here, which says, do you want to lock Hector's Hamburgers Financials? Okay, Hector's Hamburgers Financial can be modified only if locked. This is telling me that if I am going to go into QuickBooks and do anything that's adding or changing, I have to lock it. Otherwise, if I don't lock it, anything that I do will not be saved to QBox to be available to other users. So in this case, I have to say, yes, this is the one thing um, that you would have to um, train your client to say, yeah, you want to say yes each time. So then it says the file has been locked, right? So I'm gonna go back into my QBox Explorer here and show you what that looks like. And this will say, locked and you see that little lock and it's telling you which of the users that's me is currently on the file so if if we were looking at this from the perspective of the accounting professional or, or on chris's side uh you would see here actually chris is yours up and running can we can we switch over yeah to it is. yeah let's do that <coughs> excuse me yeah. yeah it is actually i just pulled it up so if you want to switch over i can show you on my screen yeah. that i'm giving that message let me give you presenter access Hit OK. Go ahead and share your screen, please. Okay. And this is high tech stuff. <laughs> we're, we're switching <laughs> back and forth and go to <laughs> webinar, which is kind of a, 
a pain. But um, I think it's very contextual. Okay, so that's Chris's computer. So the, the blue background is Chris's computer. Let's call Chris the accountant. And Chris can see multiple customers. He's got ground floor construction, Hector's Happy Hamburger, JNK. These are all the customers that he supports remotely via QBox. And then he can see right there that the company file is locked and who is using it. Okay, so let me um, let, let me switch back to me, Chris. Okay. Make me a presenter again, and then I'm gonna do something. Uh, let me show my screen. Okay, I think you can see my screen now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new transaction. It will be very unique. So I'm gonna go to create invoices. I'm gonna create a new customer called QB Power Hour Plus. Q box. Okay, so I'm creating basically new new content here. And I'm gonna just pick an item at random here and say and make this twelve thousand dollars. Okay, so I'm creating a new invoice dated today for twelve thousand dollars to this customer QB power hour uh, plus Q box. If Chris were to go right now before I close this file and open the QuickBooks file, even even after I hit save and open the QuickBooks file in view only mode, he's not gonna see this. He needs to wait until I'm finished, close out of the file so it syncs and he opens it on his side. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the file. I'm gonna go to close company. And then while we close the company, we're gonna go back into a QBox here. And QBox is basically, um, it hasn't done syncing yet. So it's working on uh, doing the sync. Now, Chris, is there a, a place where you can you can see the progress of that sync or or not? Yeah, it yet? actually it'll, it'll appear at the bottom. Uh, it usually takes QBox about three to five seconds. There it goes to acknowledge the file's been closed. Yeah, and you'll see at the bottom of your explorer, it's giving you the percentage of sync. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. It's, uh, Eighty percent done. Okay, it was just a little. Okay, so now it says it's hundred percent done. You're gonna see that little um, sync icon. It goes back into a checkbox. It's not locked anymore. So I'll switch it back uh, to Chris <laughs> again. So Chris, uh, go ahead okay. and open the file and see and if that's- kind of, it just started to sink down on my side. So um, you're just seeing that process initialized. Yeah. And you can see on my side now, the locks disappeared also, and the cue box is showing that I'm also now in sync in just a second here. Uh, and I can actually, if you like, I can open up the file and show you that particular yeah. item. Well, that's exactly okay. what I want you to do, please. So open okay. up the file and- um, and show, show us how the invoice has been updated. Now, Chris and I were discussing, hey, does this, is this, is this something we're gonna be able to pull off to show a live? And we said, look, if it doesn't, hopefully people get it, but this is going pretty smooth. So thank you for, yeah. thank you the gods of webinars for being with me. <laughs> um, so- yeah, a couple uh, of things I was gonna, I was going to mention to you, Hector, too, um, if somebody, the, the default setting when it's installed is the manual uh, locking, which asks you that yes or no question, yes or no question. In each user's settings, they can actually change it to auto auto lock if they want. So it doesn't even ask that question. If they have a client they're concerned won't remember that process, um, they can switch it over to auto lock. Oh, what, why do you do that? Can you, can you show us that real quick? Yeah, in settings here. Yeah. Um, in the lock mode, the default ah, is yeah. manual. You can take it to auto. Okay, oh, that's actually perfect. Perfect. Okay, so it's gonna open up the file that I was just working on. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a this is a really good question. If you have multiple versions of QuickBooks installed, let's say 2016, 2017, 2018, will they know which one which one to open? Uh, it, it does, as long as another version's not already open. You know, that's okay. kind of a that's, a that's a file characteristic. So as long as no other version's open, the file itself will identify the appropriate version to sure. access. Uh, but if, a, if, if maybe this is an 18 file, if I had 16 open, it would actually give me a message saying, hey, it looks like there's a problem here. Right. Um, same pro processes and practices of any other local file that right. you're opening. So, so you can still open the file straight from QuickBooks without double clicking on the QBox Explorer. Uh, yeah, you can actually. So a lot of our financial professionals prefer to open it from QuickBooks. We just tell them, you know, it's important you make sure you're opening the right instance and you get the lock request. Right, but it'll work the same way if they open it directly from QuickBooks. That's a really good point. So check, see if my invoice came in. Okay. 
And I'm going to go to create, and I'll just do backwards here. Yeah, that should be there. There it, it is. is. There it is. So it's that's it. That's the whole demo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty pretty simple so now we're going to assume that we're going to have a whole bunch of questions now what i'm going to do is because we did this much faster uh, i mean this is actually really quick i actually took screenshots of, of what the whole process looks like on the client side when they're doing the installation because i know a lot of the things that i have anxiety for anytime i work with like a new app or something like that is hey is this going to be a pain in the butt you know from you know, from what the client needs to do. So this is what, this is what, the, this is what it looks like from the client's perspective. Assuming that you are the one that creates the QBox account, maybe you're the one that's paying for it and you're gonna invite your client to it. So first they get an email and they're gonna click on set up an account. They're gonna get a temporary password. They're gonna set up their permanent password. They're gonna download the installer. They're gonna complete the installation. It's gonna ask them, you know, where, where in the computer would you like the QBox folder? to be installed pretty much the same way that Dropbox works. Then you're gonna get the, the QBox Explorer and within a few minutes, the file will instantly download uh, in their operating system where Quick, uh, QuickBooks is installed. And the client could also log into the portal, to uh, the web-based portal if they wanna see sync history or download the files manually, that sort of thing. So this is what it looks like. Uh, first, the client gets an, an email that says, you, are, you have been, uh, You've been sent a shared folder from your CPA. Click here, or from your accountant, whatever. Click here to set up the QBox account. Then it takes them to this website. They enter their email, their name. They put, I'm not a robot. They must pass that test. And <laughs> hit submit. <laughs> I never really understood that one. Then they're going to get another email saying, your account has been created. Here's your email. Here's your temporary password. Click on sign in. They're going to you know, copy and paste the password in there or type it create their new permanent password. They're gonna click on download. It's, it'll, it'll download a setup.exe file somewhere in the downloads folder, it'll, whatever it is, they double click on the installer. It will ask them where in your computer you would like to save the file. You can leave it on the default or change it. Then they're gonna log into QBox using their email and the new password they set up. They're gonna have that QBox Explorer window pop up, the same one that we showed you. And they could also go to uh, the website itself, um, and they could they could view the portal through the website. But obviously, they can't really open QuickBooks through the website. But if they happen to be in some other computer, I assume you can download files straight from the website. I haven't tried that, but is that, is that something you can do, Chris? Or it's just to monitor? Yeah. No, so actually, well, the, the, basically, the, the ability to download the client and the files from the cloud is for users that are either reinstalling the application or if, you know, heaven forbid something happens to your computer and you want to reinstall your files, you can go into your web dashboard, click on admin there in the upper right hand corner. And in the left hand uh, directory, you'll be presented with an option to download the client, which downloading the client puts all the folders and associated files back to your local desktop. So again, if something happened to their computer or they bought a new computer, it's very easy to put everything back on their local system. Right, right, okay. Yeah, so, okay, that's good. But but this, like the web-based, this web-based portal, it's not really necessary at all. If anything, it'll, it may confuse some folks. I, as an accountant, I like to have it because I like to know where everything is. I like to know what the permissions are in the folders. I like to know when things were last modified, who did it. I find all that stuff really valuable uh, in a web-based application. But for most of the end users, this stuff doesn't really doesn't really matter. Yeah, you're um, absolutely right. In fact, we have, we have on a regular basis on the support side, we have shared users that call and they even forget they ever had a web dashboard. <laughs> Right. So uh, right. they're like you said exactly. They're running off their local, you know, desktop QBox Explorer on the most frequent basis. Okay. So Chris, there's um, there's like, I think a million questions. I think this webinar broke the record <laughs> on questions. So let's okay. see what we have here. Uh, you can read the questions too, but let's see. Uh, how much is the? How much is it? Was it twelve dollars a month per sync folder? And each sync folder can have. See, do I have that? I have that slide up somewhere. So those facts are good to have. Yes, twelve dollars a month per sync folder, and um, and that one folder can have unlimited files, multiple QuickBooks files. Yes, it can sync documents like PDF, JPEG, Word, Excel. So the the common documents. Uh, does QBox work with QuickBooks POS point of sale? That's a good question. 
Chris. Uh, yes, and so we actually, that's a huge user group of ours, uh, not because it syncs the actual POS file, but because in, in the local retail location, they're importing the POS data into the QuickBooks file that's open and locked. And when they close that QuickBooks file, that information is being transmitted to the owner or franchise or anybody else connected to that you know, location. So no, it doesn't transmit the POS file, but yes, it does transmit the POS data that's been imported into the QuickBooks file. Okay. If the client has the QB file on their computer mm -hmm. currently, uh, we only got five minutes. So I'll turn on the webcam since we're doing this kind of casual conversation here. So if the if the if the client has uh, a QuickBooks file currently on on their computer, what is the process? Do they do they have to then copy that file into that QBox folder? Uh, so yes, they do need to move the file into the QBox directory that's on their local system. And and the first time QBox actually takes care of making sure everyone has a matched copy. So only one user needs to move the file into that folder. QBox automatically seeing a brand new file will, will match it on everyone's local system. So the and there's actually within the QBox Explorer, there is a utility to help a, a client move their file. And that was a result of us realizing that QuickBooks wonderful nested directory where it puts new files is not as easy to find as we thought it was. Right. So they can use our utility that actually does a search, helps them find it, and moves it for them if they like. Okay, so the software, when you first install it, if you don't have already sort of a, a QuickBooks file, it'll tell you, hey, would you like me to find your QuickBooks files to, to set this up for you? Yes. Okay, what kind of support does uh, QBox have? Like if the client's trying to figure this whole thing out, or is there any, is there a, a knowledge base, YouTube yep. videos, what, what's out there in support? Uh, actually, that, that's probably one of our strongest attributes. Um, we're, we're Pacific time, 6 to 6, Monday through Friday. When you call, you're going to get a live person. You're not going to be put on hold. You're going to get someone you know credible that understands our product and actually help you. And if they can't, they're going to get someone else here in our office that can. Um, we also now have the chat function available from the home page of the website that's also available 6 to 6, where you can get you know any additional quick answers that you need. Uh, and then after hours and on the weekend, we can you can reach support always by email. And I usually see them reply uh, within literally minutes. Uh, so it's not like you're left hanging. If they have a critical issue on the weekend and they email support, they'll call them back. So I think our support is probably one of our strongest attributes of our product. Okay. Somebody else is saying that they have a QuickBooks Enterprise client with a pretty big file. You know, how long will the sync take after the client's done working? Do you, do you have a quick answer on that? Yeah, it's it's really predicated on two things: size of the file and internet speed. If they have if they have reasonable internet speed, let's say you know five megabits per second down, and you know three to five megabits per second up, uh, it's going to be a couple of minutes at at worst. Uh, Otherwise, it, it kind of can go down from there if they have horrible internet, if the file is extremely large and QBox is having to verify a larger number of parts, then that time can extend out. But again, as you mentioned earlier, the nice thing about QBox, we actually have a user group that's centered around people that have lousy internet and they just like using QBox because while they're working in the file, it's a local instance, they have no performance issues, and they're only relying on the internet when they open and lock and when they close and sync. Uh, but to answer their question, you know, probably a couple of minutes as long as they have reasonable internet. Somebody's saying, and that, that's actually a really good question. What if my client's computer gets lost, stolen, goes away, and they want to get back up and running? I assume they just install QuickBooks software in their computer, download QBox, and it will sync automatically, right? And that shouldn't be any Yeah, it's, it's literally a couple of clicks. So on the new computer, they can just go into their web dashboard, click download QBox client. Uh, QBox will actually ask them when it installs on a second machine, it'll ask them, hey, this looks like it was already installed on another machine. Do you want to disable that other one? And when they select yes, that one, if it's been stolen or they have some issue, it'll it'll terminate connectivity with that previous computer. Okay, perfect. And they said that they have, do you have a, they have a phone number for support or it's all email or live chat version? Uh, we have all three. We have a, a live phone number that's, again, available 6 to 6, um, which is our primary number. I can give it to you now, or they can go to our website to get it. Um, yeah, give it. Yeah, give it. I, I got to tell you, uh, uh, accounting professionals, 
feel very refreshed by an, an app actually having a phone number for yeah. people to call. So yeah. you know, yeah. phone number, right. the toll-free toll -free version is 855-448, and it's actually QBox, but it's uh, 7269. Once again? 855-448-7269. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Now, there was a, there's a lot of questions about multi-user, and that, you know, that gets a little bit tricky. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the last polling question here. Uh, actually, I'll, this is the last one, at least for the CPE. I'll do one more. If would you like to get um, just a quick email with the links, information about a QBox. And while this poll is up, I want you to explain QBox multi-user because people are a little bit, there's a few questions about the whole multi-user setup. How, how, well, how does the multi-user experience work with QBox? Okay, so first of all, I just I want to make it very clear that, that the multi-user doesn't change the concept of QBox. In other words, remote users will always be subject to that take turns locking process, period. So all multi-user does is allow a group of people within a common local area network to actively share and work in a file simultaneously. So QBox just has a functionality, we call it an MU folder that can be established either on a server or a peer-to-peer -peer network basis. And, and so that's the criteria of sharing the file. We also have our own security criteria that that group have to be part of what we call team members and they have to be on a common private email domain. Otherwise, you can invite anybody on any public domain, you know, uh, Gmail or Hotmail. Uh, but for that MU instance, they have to be on the same private email domain for security reasons. Uh, it's a reasonably easy uh, setup for a particular user. Uh, and while it's locked by one or any of those users within the local area network, everyone remote is locked out for that window of time. They cannot make edits. But as soon as the last person has exited the file within that local area network, QBox will go through its traditional processes of syncing the file and releasing the lock for the remote users. So if you are an accounting professional supporting a client that has, uh, has a multi-user environment, I guess everybody would have to be uh, fully logged out in order for it to then sink into because as long as you have at least one person logged in in a multi-user environment uh the remote people will not be able to access it so for multi-user in qbox it would be multi-user in the local area network not multi-user remote correct that's that's correct hector that's exactly right and and really you know kind of back to your your introduction earlier which was fantastic QBox is a tool that's designed for financial professionals to do support work for their clients. So when they're only doing that regular check-in work, adjusting journal entries, um, they don't need continuous access to the file. That's, that's really its sweet spot. We are not ever going to compete with uh, you know, cloud hosting or, or SaaS-based uh, because like you said, you just never will have the ability to work simultaneously from remote locations. But when, as it comes to you know check-in support work, there's just not any option we think that's as reasonably priced or easy to use as QBox. Okay, perfect. I, I will send you the questions logged. I don't think I was able to answer every question that was there, but Chris, we're, we're on top of the hour. Thank you very much. Uh, the website is www.qboxplus.com. It was on the it was on the first slide. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen one more time. Here is www uh, qboxplus.com for the folks that opted in for the email. Chris, you know, figure out, send them a quick email with whatever information you want to send them. I'll send you that. And um, Chris, any last words before I we wrap this up and do the last couple of messaging here for the webinar? Uh, no, thank you again. It was a fantastic uh, explanation and introduction. Uh, I would mention to anyone, if you're considering trying QBox, everybody gets the first 30 days free. When you click to sign up, you don't have to enter any credit card information. You literally can just sign up and set up as many folders as you, as you like and give it a good test run just to decide if it's a good fit for you and your clients or not. Uh, if it isn't, no harm, no foul. You close out your account and, and you know, that's the end of it. Uh, if it does you know, become a, a good usable tool for you and supporting your clients, then great. We'll look forward to having you as a client. But, but if you're questioning at all, if you're considering some alternative to what you're currently doing, we'd love to have you try it. Perfect. And are you going to be at uh, Scaling New Heights this year? 
Yes, I am. And, and uh, I'm, I'm so excited to hear they have a venue. It's going to be an outstanding conference this year. We will be there as a sponsor and we'll look forward to meeting all of you if you happen to be there. All right. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate uh, sponsoring the webinar and doing the live demo with me. Okay. So I have the last polling question up. This is just kind of a fun one for me to kind of gauge, you know, whether you learned something uh, new or not. Okay, let's see. Let's go ahead. There's still a lot of questions about this whole remote access concept. So hopefully, Chris, maybe you on the on that email maybe have a little blurb on the on how remote. Uh, I mean, not remote access, multi-user access. I mean, there, there's still some confusion around that. So okay. maybe, maybe make your way to to write something about that as well. I'll send you the email, the list of emails okay. um, later on. Okay, let me close this polling question. Thank you very much. 61% of you said most of the content was new and only 4% said they knew that all the content already. So that's good. So uh, as long as we're bringing new stuff, I'm happy. So some of the upcoming recommended events, uh, Michelle Long has a virtual conference called the Accounting Beacon. It's May 10th and May 11th. Uh, the website is accountingbeacon.com. Check it out. Scaling New Heights in Atlanta magically and by a miracle, apparently is still happening. Uh, there was a, there were some announcements earlier this week that it may not happen. That didn't ha there was no venue. Um, uh, there was just a lot of confusion going on. But they they finally announced that there was a venue change. It's it's inked, it's signed. Same dates, no 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 change to the dates. Um, so if you're still considering going, check it out. Woodedevents.com. Uh, this will be my sixth year uh, going to the conference and my fourth year teaching, and that's going to be in June. And then QuickBooks Connect in San Jose, California, November fifth uh, and seven. One last thing um, before we wrap this up, and there's 400 people logged in here. If you if you like the content that I create for you, that I that I produce, Michelle as well, obviously support her VCon. I have a new podcast. It's free. It's called The Art of Advisory. It's live on Facebook, Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. You can check it out by going to facebook.com forward slash art of advisory. We have 10 episodes already. We, we just got started. We were focused on creating content, and now we like to build an audience. Okay, It's focused on uh, building your practice around consulting and advisory services, and I would love for you to check it out. They're one-hour long sessions. I do it with my partner, Kirk Bowman, and we basically deep dive into how to sell advisory services, consulting services, what does it look like, how to, what, how to have conversations with clients. I really appreciate At least give it a try. If you love it, subscribe, be part of it, comment. We also want people interacting with us. And, uh, and of course, uh, Michelle Long's accounting VCon as well. QB Power Hour, we don't have any topics set up for the next ones. It's tax season, so it's, it's a little bit difficult for me to start building all those things. But it is going to happen soon. That's the schedule, April 5th, April 19th, May 3rd, and May 17th. And we'd like to thank once again our show sponsors, T-Sheets, number one rated app for apps, uh, inapps.com, create, manage, and Approve your timesheets. Aero Workflow, the only workflow manager for QuickBooks Online, for Pro Advisors, by Pro Advisors, and HubDoc, the most popular document aggregator for QuickBooks Online power users. I personally use all these three apps in my practice and I personally endorse them. So join our Facebook group to continue the conversation. Share your um, share your comments. Ask questions. Email qbpowerhour.com for sponsors, uh, sponsorship ideas and topic suggestions. Thank you very much, and you have a wonderful rest of your day.